Aha! You think you can fool us, Zack King? Not today. <laughs> I found it. I have found it. Okay, who's ready? Hey guys, it is Brandon Baum here. Now, I am super excited for today's video because today I'm going to be reacting and trying to break down how the legend himself, Zack King, has created some of his most viral videos. Now, Zack has been a huge inspiration to me over these past five years and recently he's even started reacting to a few of my videos. So today I wanted to flip the table around and try and break down some of the magic that goes inside of a Zack King video. Let's roll first clip. Oh, nice. So Zack's behind bars. He's gone for that cool Harry Potter newspaper effect. He's squeezed out the bars and he's grabbed the donut <laughs> and he's lifted it straight into the cell with him. Brilliant. Oh, amazing. Wow, look at those page turns. They look so good. That's unbelievable. Okay, now how was that made? Let's break it down. I'm, I'm going to start throwing out some guesses here. So the security guard places down the donut. I'm going to guess a hand comes in shot pretty soon after that to grab the donut out of the way so they can get a clear section of it. Then in a separate plate on a separate studio shot, they had Zach behind these two bars. He leaned forward in front of a green card onto a table beneath him where there was a, a big rubber ring with tracking marks on. And they made sure the height of that table was the same height from the paper to the table so that they could match the two frames up. So when he pulled the rubber ring through, it would match the height of when they made him small and put him on the paper. Wow, they have done such unbelievable work with this. Uh, I'm, I want to watch it one more time for fun. <laughs> okay, that was good. I'm desperate to know if we got that right. Okay, so moving on to video number two. Uh, so this is Zach playing pool. Oh, okay. He starts this off, the ball's moving. Uh, the Sorry, camera buddy. is parallaxing round. Zach gets ready to hit it, and he falls into the pool table. <laughs> um, I, uh, uh, Zach, you're hurting my brain here. I've got it! I, th I think I've, I've cracked it. I think I think we've got it. We've got it. We have got it. Okay, so I think they shot this in two sections. I'm guessing the jump cut is after he rolls into the table. So section number one, Zach takes the pool shot and then rolls onto the dry table. The camera stays locked off, doesn't move. They then remove a sheet that has the pool table off, revealing the pool underneath it. Or they quickly fill it up. They do something of, of, of that sort. Then, Zack jumps into that water, rolling in the same direction, creating as much splashing as possible to cover up the movement. Then, then in the edit, they take the shot of him rolling onto the table, cut him out to make it look like he submerges in the water, and then cut to the other footage of him emerging back out. And boom! You get that. Yes! Did we get it right, Zack? Please say yes, because if not, I have nothing. I love it. At the end, there's like a, a nice little touch where they track outwards. You can see underneath the pool table that there isn't actually a swimming pool there. Nice. I'm going to pause the video right there to say a massive thank you to our sponsors, Epidemic Sound. Epidemic Sounds is a music platform that suggests tracks for you to use in your videos based off of tracks it knows you already love. For the first 30 days free, check out the link in my description. Let's get back to the video. Okay, up next, we've got a video with Terry Crews. What's going on here? Zach's in the gym, pumping weights, and there it is. <clears throat> he is sitting behind the TV, eating snacks. Get out of here! <laughs> Terry Crews is a brilliant actor. It is theory time. How on earth was this made? How did Zack King go from lifting weights to being inside of a TV? There is so much going on in here. Let's attempt to break down and work out how he has created this. So there is something very suspicious going on. We lose Terry out of shot. Why would we lose Terry out of shot? <laughs> Usually we do something like that is if you're trying to do something sneaky here, like a jump cut. Now when you're doing a jump cut, you want to try and have as little things moving in frame during that time period as possible. So an easy fix around instead of making your actors freeze is just to lose them out of shot, which they've done here. So I think they've used that opportunity of losing Terry out of frame to do a jump cut here. So that's one of our marks. Then I think the camera person that has stayed on his mark, Zach King's carried on acting. He's carried on benching whilst Terry's frozen, stopped speaking. They get about six seconds of him pumping the weights on his own. Then I'm going to guess an assistant came in, put a TV on Zach's chest that just had a green overlay on that they were able to track on the prior footage onto it. Terry then continued his lines. The camera person carried on his move. And then all that was left to do was for Terry to realize that there was a TV sitting on Zach the entire time. <sighs> Watching Zach's videos make me think and question everything. They hurt my brain. Zach is a prisoner. Um, oh, a spotlight is on him. 
he separates from his shadow. Nice. Gets a lift up and escapes out the prison walls. Wow. Here, give me your hand. Wow. Zach really doesn't make this easy. Got it. I have got it. Get ready. This is the explosive part. There was never a shadow there. Incorrect. This is the explosive part. They didn't actually use Zack's shadow to get a shadow. I'm going to go with, they shot this in two sections. Plate number one is, we, let's call it the Zack plate. And he simply steps up on some boxes or a ladder or something that gives him the height to get over the wall. Question is, is when did it turn from his real shadow into the fake shadow? Let's watch it again. Aha! You think you can fool us, Zack King? Not today. <laughs> I found it. I have found it. Okay, who's ready? Okay, we've got this. We got him. Watch this frame by frame. And I'm sorry to do this to you, Zach. Before I reveal this, I've just got to say that took me four watches to see Zach. So congrats, because that was brilliant. Zach passes in front of his own shadow, meaning there are a few frames where we don't see the shadow whatsoever, meaning they can very easily swap from his real shadow to the fake shadow without the audience noticing. I didn't notice until I rewatched it four times, but watch this again really slowly. But you'll notice that the shadow before he crosses over it and then after it completely changes. Look at the head shape. Now that is just beyond genius planning. Uh, I loved it. Okay, moving on to our next video. Okay, so Zach has half a watermelon, puts it down on a mirror, gives it a twist. <laughs> and as he lifts it up, it is a full watermelon. Name's Deborah Ann. Oh, Zach. Watermelon. Come get your watermelon here. Oh my god. Uh, okay, I'm going to pause the video right there because not only has he added half a watermelon, into reality from nowhere. I have no idea where this half watermelon has suddenly come from. He's also removed the other watermelon from the reflection. And trust me, that is a hard job. Now, I've got two theories here. Theory number one is they remove a section of the mirror and they feed the bottom half of the watermelon up for Zach to cut. I'm not feeling my theory. I don't, I don't like it because... That would be so hard to replicate those reflections. Okay, I've come up with a new theory. And my theory is that there is only half a watermelon throughout. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay, hear me out here. So as he puts the watermelon on the mirror and he lifts it up, he's still only ever holding the bottom half. Now, if there was a full watermelon there, why wouldn't he be holding it at the center of gravity? That's because he is. It's just the center of gravity is at the bottom. So he moves it onto the chopping board where there is only half a watermelon and he slices it. And as he slices it with the samurai sword, there is no friction from the watermelon. That's because he's cutting nothing. But how did they add half a watermelon in in post? Now, if I'm going to guess and how I would probably do it is I'd put a watermelon in place and follow out the movement of where it was where Zach lifted it and put it over. In the edit, you'd then go frame by frame cutting around this watermelon and then tracking it onto the other half of Zach's so it looks like it was a full watermelon throughout. There's something a bit fishy going on here. But if we go frame by frame looking at that watermelon, we'll see there's suddenly a big light shift when Deborah picks it up. My guess is that half a watermelon was sitting there before Zach had even sliced the melon. And all she has to do is come into frame and pick it up. Then in post, they create that nice roll of the watermelon, perfectly coming in time with her picking it up. And I've just noticed something. Uh-oh. Uh, it looks like Deborah's hands actually go through the watermelon sign. So maybe that sign was added in post. And if it was, nice touch. And the last thing to finish off the video is the reflection in the mirror. I'm going to guess that they went through the painful process of going frame by frame, painting out the watermelon and mapping sections of his shirt over it to make it look like the watermelon was never there. Again, this is just another example of genius filmmaking. Okay, I think that's a great place to wrap this video up. I've enjoyed making this video so much. Watching Zach King videos is probably one of my favorite things to do. Smash that like button. Let me know that you're enjoying these types of videos. Subscribe, join the community, and write in the comments what you want to see me react to next. Anyway, my dinner's ready, so I'm going to shoot off. So guys, I'll see you on the next one.